Hold on to my yeah. All right, so I'll say start with God. Start with God. If you don't know him, just have a regular conversation like you would with anybody else. Start there. Then I'd say pray. Pray for the hurting families that have been subjected to gun violence in our community. But first, pray for your own families. Place them on the altar. Start there. And then I'll call for all our many, many churches in Syracuse to do some praying and fasting because it starts there. Amen. Okay, so we have prayer. So um, start with God, pray, pray for your families, but also pray for people in your neighborhood, in your community. And if you belong to a church or you have a church here, make a commitment to include um, prayer around gun violence during your services. Yes. yes. All right. Well, my thought goes right into what you're talking about. We talked a lot about spiritual warfare tonight. We've had uh, several comments here related to the Bible. My comment is that our pastors and the churches in general, and this isn't just Syracuse, it's all over the country, but our pastors have got to get back to being servants. The, the pastors in, in our churches have gotten so far away from being the shepherd that Jesus Christ was. Jesus came here and he came to serve, not to serve, not to be served. Yes, but so did. many of our pastors now are so worried about what you're doing for me, what you're giving me, anniversary, appreciation, special blessing, offering, what car they driving, what house they living in. Got Creflo Dollar running around, people like this influencing that kind of attitude. Our pastors really need to start getting back to doing their jobs if that's what they are calling themselves. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so we're a call to action to our pastors, to our churches, and our pastors having co uh, courageous conversations with them is another actionable item. So if you feel led to be that person to talk to your pastor, um, that's good. I'm going to review everything after a while. Hello, sir. Uh, I pretty much have tackled some of the, the points that have been made. Um, for example, parents need to spend more time with their children. Um, not just provide for them, but to, to you know, <coughs> make them feel important. Play with them, do stuff with them. Um, excuse me. And encourage them to get involved in 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 a, in a career. Find out what they're good at. Um, and to, excuse me. Jesus Christ, and um, I, I hand out a lot of tricks. Um, <coughs> I don't have any children, but um, <coughs> another, yeah, another important thing, and yes, is the spiritual warfare. The I did, um, I think about uh, it, what you mentioned in Ezekiel twenty-two about standing in the gap. Um, that that's important these days to um, I stand in the gap every day for different sites of my family, for people at places I've worked at and stuff like that, and, and neighbor families. Um, <coughs> gotta work together as a community. And <coughs> final note, if and any family or friends of that little girl that was was killed, um, the 11 year old, and I, I expressed my deepest sympathies and condolences to them. Thank you so much for that. So you, you had several things, I just want to be clear, and the one that stood out the most, you were saying 
as a takeaway right now, just be a person who stands up and stands in the gap of for other families, standing up for other people, filling in the gaps for them in their need, making a commitment to do that. Okay, thank you. Really quick, as a, uh, I work at Syracuse City School District as a social worker and also a therapist in the area. And so I, I guess my suggestion would be just to listen. One of the common denominators of what I hear in therapy with kids is that my mom don't listen, my dad don't listen. I'm not heard, right? They're not understood. And so as we go on for the next couple of weeks, just be present. We, we, have, we do a lot of hustle and bustle. We gotta get here, we gotta get here, we gotta make this, we gotta cook dinner. But if we just stop for a little while, and how many times do our kids just say, mom, 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 and then we, but how many times do they have to say it? And so if we could just stop for a second, give them our undivided attention, look at them in their face, Yes. Right? And just be in the moment with them. Yes. And, I, you know, I, it's a struggle because a lot of times people are like, I just want you to work with my kid, fix him, fix her. Mm -hmm. But I can't fix him without getting in the home. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the system that they come from that needs to be fixed. Yeah. Not just the kid. Those behaviors are for a reason. So we have to get involved in what is the reason, what's, what's happening at home, right? And so just being able to be present this week is going to be, if this, for the next couple of weeks, when you drive, be present. There's so much you can see. There's so much. We are just walking trauma, just survival, just in our survival mode. Just listen to what's happening to them. That's all they, it's so huge. They just want to be heard. They want to be understood. They want to be hugged. Yes, they want to just hear, I love you. <laughs> so all the things that we heard so far. Oh, yes. My sister here over here. Just very quickly. Um, this was already said, but it was resonating in my spirit before you said it consistency and I think that that's something that we can all do in the next um, couple of weeks and we those of us that are social media people hashtag Syracuse cares um, hashtag we are a neighborhood right? those are the things that we can do and I am publicly speaking um, as a woman of God a woman of faith as a minister that I will personally touch those ministers who um, have valid reasons for not being here tonight to make sure that we are praying um, consistently for our community. And I'm gonna do my level best to make sure that my brothers and sisters in the faith will be with us um, at the upcoming meetings. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna make sure all the panelists do close out with something about um, with a final thought, but if you can, just for a moment again, I'd like you to think about something. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, everyone. If everyone can close their eyes, you can close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Come on, Karen. Okay. Did you know that the human brain receives 90 million bits of information every 60 seconds? and it processes only four million of that 90 million bits of information from its peripheral view and from what it hears. Think about this. And when you think about the power of influence and marketing and the things that form our thoughts and our subconscious thoughts, think about that, the mind, protecting the mind. We heard that a lot today. We heard love. Love, when the Bible talks about the heart, it talks, the heart is a representation of the mind. And then there's some interpretations where it's talking about the heart from the emotional standpoint. But it all goes back to our mind. We have to protect our minds. But if that little bit of information for you, 
hopefully he can help you with that. Right now, you should see darkness with your eyes closed. The only thing that should be influencing you, and hopefully if you're concentrating, is a little light that will start to form with your eyes closed. And if you don't see that light now, that's okay. You can practice it when you get home. Because you get to that light by clearing your mind. And when your mind is clear, that is your power. That's when you start to pray. Your thoughts form realities that we experience in human form. So the task that we're set tonight, get three people. If you can commit to bringing three people to the next meeting, you make it wider. If you can commit to praying for yourself, your families, and then the families in your community and others consistently. If you can commit to stand up and step in and fill in the gap for someone, if you see somebody in need and you are able, do so. If you can just tell somebody, not just for over the next month, but for the rest of your life, if you feel led to step up and pass on the message of anything that you heard tonight to someone, please do so. And if you can just listen to our children, if we can stop thinking we know everything and we have all the answers, because we've been doing something for so long and we've been here, and I was once upon a time a kid, and I did this and I did that, and I'm raising millennials and zillennials, and I do hear my kids. But if we can just take a moment to actually truly, actively listen to our children, that would be great. And lastly, if we can get some people to commit to pass on a message to our leadership, our spiritual leadership with our pastors, yes. of things that were happening here tonight and the next meetings and just keep them abreast, but more importantly, to remind them that they are the shepherd and not the sheep. And pray for them. Pray for them. We're supposed to pray for our leaders. We're not supposed to judge our leaders. We're not supposed to chastise our leaders. We should be praying for our leaders because they're in that position for a reason. And we have to sometimes be the ones to remind them why they're there. Right? Because everything starts with us. You can open your eyes if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you thought tonight was good and you got something to take away and you feel like it was productive and how many you be in there in February and you're telling some others? All right? To the side, it's like, okay, you know, it's okay, but I got some ideas, I got some thoughts I'd like to bring to the table, you know, um, for next month, which we are very open to. Just make sure you, if you haven't filled out that sheet outside of the doors here, please make sure you put your information on that sheet, okay? And thumbs down, I'm watching. Thumbs down if you was like, boo, this was like, I wasted my two hours, I really didn't need to be at anything. So that's good. Let's clap it up because that did a good job for the first one. I'd like to point out our sister Valerie Hill, who is the great organizer of this impromptu forum. Let's clap it up for our panelists who showed up tonight to be here from different agencies, all sides of town, because this is what it's about. And if you can, with your mics, grab your mics, if you can leave us with one final thought this evening. And even if it's an actionable item yourself, but if you could leave us with one, one final thought until next time. From how we can help you. How we can help you with your agencies, the work you're doing, or something that we can do as a community and as a people to help you. Please share that with us. Show love and no matter what. Heal. What does healing look like? What does a healed community look like? And begin to heal within ourselves because in order to heal, we have to heal. I would like to say we were talking about solutions. Uh, it's a blessing to have you here and the superintendent here today. My children go to school on bus number 10. But, uh, to uh, Syracuse Bank. And they have to fight. They have to fight with their mind. 
not to be subjected to the music that they listen to when traveling from their residence to school, back from school to their residence. They're at a war because the music that they're listening to is degrading them. It is the drill music. It is the uh, provocative music. And then my children, my, uh, my children only listen to gospel music. So now they're coming home repeating things that they heard on the bus. I got to fight against that. So I went to the bus driver and I spoke to him. I said, fight with me, brother, and change the radio station. Fight with me, brother. Be my shield for my children. Protect my child. Well, it lasted for a day, and he was back to, you know. I understand they have a battle within themselves also to change. But if we're talking about change today, it's bus number 10. <laughs> uh, thank, thank everybody for uh, coming out and uh, being attentive. Uh, my last thought is, you know, just be aware and be mindful when you're dealing with the young people. A lot of our young people are depressed. Yeah. Uh, it's just they have heavy hearts. They're uh, losing their friends at a, a rate faster than what some of us experience. So be mindful of that when you interact uh, with young people before we become judgmental and try to point out their behaviors. Um, have a level of you know, mercy and understanding because um, they feel too. I think sometimes as adults we forget that. And we just put these expectations on our children that they can't meet at this time because they don't have the tools to. Say that. So you have to, anytime you interact with young people, you have to impart a tool and remind them of that consistently until that tool is put to use. So just uh, be mindful of the state of our young people. Thank you so much. And Ed? Yes, um, just like to say, uh, I'm very, very proud of Ms. Hale. She uh, put it together, we talked about it a lot, and together and I, I think she was standing on basis on that because everybody can stand up and clap for this battle because yes. she really where it had to be. And uh, this is not going to be one of those ones where we just talk about it, we won't be about it. Right. So, you know, from here on out, let's go. So not only those three people, bring back three solutions too. Alright. Alright now, and trust the process. So February 28th, 6 o'clock p.m. at the Southwest Community Center. And March 3rd, oh, it's gonna be all you. So March 3rd is gonna be the, oh, look at that. See how we're working? March 3rd will be all you. And so February, we'll have a game plan to talk about getting all, getting in front of all the youth in March 3rd. But February 28th, please make sure you show up to the Southwest Community Center. Please commit to bringing up to three people with you for that as the action item. And then this is how we're grown. This would cause the, this is the cause and the effect. So thank you so much for coming out. Have a blessed night. And don't forget to pray. Yeah, we got a big boy. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Yeah, we will.